Blessings to all around the world by web. Welcome to Collectors Connect brought to you by the WebV Collective. I'm your host, Dino. And in this video, I have the honor and privilege of sitting down with the man behind VV Investments. Thanks for joining me, Josh. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling uh, super excited. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, man. I've been really looking forward to this discussion. It's been really cool chatting with you more and more lately. And many of the WebV members watch your content, including me. And so we're very excited for this chat. And we're really impressed, man, by your YouTube channel. There's so many things that I like about your videos. Uh, obviously, the production value is super professional. It just really leaps off the screen. Thank but you. you also have like really creative topics. Your videos are really engaging, even though you don't show your face. So that's a really big key. And yet your videos are super, super informative in a way that you can actually digest them. You know, some videos just go on and on for a long time with a bunch of information, but you organize them in bullet points and have really nice graphics. So you do a really awesome job and you're a big time contributor to the VV community, in my opinion. And so I'm sure many people are looking forward to learning more about you. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate that. Um, making sure the content's digestible is a big focus of mine. So I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we're doing a great job, man. So what's your story about how you came to VV? What inspired you to create content? Um, so I got involved in VV in March of 2021. So I originally got, uh, got involved with the token. Um, I was looking at old coins like everybody else was at the time. Uh, that's when the market was booming, right? So um, I didn't know anything about OMI, didn't know anything about VV. Um, I was kind of just doing some research on altcoins, and that's when I came across it, um, right after it had pumped. <laughs> but um, I, I bought into the token then, and then it took me a few months to get involved in the, uh, the app. I got involved in May of 2021, I think it was. And uh, from there, I fell in love right away. I think the first collectible I ever bought was Ultraman, the, uh, the uncommon, or the rare, sorry, the rare. And um, tossed it right into AR. And uh, from there, I just I just fell in love. So um, did the idea of just being able to collect things on your mobile phone and not have to worry about physical collectibles being discolored from the sun or, um, you know, having to having to not be able to open the actual collectible too is a big thing. Um, but yeah, just, just the, the flexibility that you have of being able to collect it via your mobile phone was a big, uh, big eye opener for me. So that's kind of why I got involved to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the same, same here. And the fact that, you know, it, it does preserve its value, but you can also sell it. Don't have to ship anything, especially mm -hmm. with the comics. You can open them, you can read them. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to worry about messing up the pages. So, it, yeah, it's definitely a big intrigue. VV really came in at the perfect time. So Yeah, and, and I mean, like right now, if I was to even look back when I first started VV and to say that I had a couple hundred collectibles now, I, I would have never believed me, right? Like even in a physical space, for me to picture 200 collectibles in a room, that's, that's a lot, right? But 200 on my phone, it kind of just came out of nowhere and I didn't even realize it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a big advantage to the app, so. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, th I think that speaks a lot to uh, VV in terms of how enjoyable it is, because, yeah, same thing with me. I thought this was silly when I first got into it and I thought I was just going to buy a few things and sell them in a few months. And now I'm sitting with, you know, three, four hundred collectibles <laughs> slash comics. It's but it doesn't take up any space. It's so easy over time to keep dropping cool stuff. And I just keep adding into my collection without even trying. So it's, yeah, it's too it. easy. Too easy. I love it. Um, what inspired you to create content for VV? Because that's a whole nother step, right? Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing for me, when, when I created the channel, I wanted to use it almost as a medium to communicate with the team. I enjoy obviously being able to communicate with the community. And that's you know why I'm hopping on the interview with you. I want to get more involved in that side of things. But um, just being able to kind of relay my thoughts to the team in a video format instead of you know trying to bombard them on Twitter or Instagram via DMs. Um, I thought that that was a, a little bit more effective way of trying to communicate with them. So that was the main reason. That's really cool, man, and really unique too. And I think you've you've done that, right? I've, I've seen Ecomi or Vivi comment on your videos. It seems like they're watching, so that's really cool. Yeah, they commented on a, on a few, and then they're also active over on Twitter as well. So it's uh, it's been awesome. Yeah. Well, so what were some of the main things that you were hoping to communicate to them? Um, I guess vision of where I could see the platform in the future. So I've made a couple of videos talking about, you know, features I'd like to see on the app. 
mm -hmm. um, that, uh, that sort of stuff. Um, I do actually have a video coming out in terms of certain little um, things that I see on the app right now that they can tweak. Um, but it, I, I mean, the biggest thing, I guess, is just kind of having a say um, in terms of the direction of where this platform is going, right? Because the team has been quite clear with um, them monitoring social channels. So when they say that over and over and over again, it's it's quite appealing to me. Um, and, and then like what you just said, right? Like they've commented on a few videos and they're active over on Twitter. So that only makes it even more, um, I guess, enjoyable for me and, and kind of, uh, you know, the original purpose of why I made the channel, so. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Well, and you clearly have a skill set that's perfect for content creating. I mean, all the things that I mentioned earlier, just very impressive videos, very impressive channel and impressive as a speaker as well. You're able to portray certain concepts and share information in a, a very digestible way. So how did you uh, gain this skill set that we can clearly all see from your videos? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, it, speaking to me, speaking is like a form of art. Um, I, I started my career in sales. Uh, I dropped out of university when I was 19 to kind of pursue my first business and that was in the sales industry. Um, so, I mean, to make a longer story short, the way that I speak is the result of me pitching and I'm not exaggerating when I say this hundreds of thousands of people, um, face to face. Um, I would talk to, I mean, I, I did a mix of business to business campaigns, but then also event based marketing campaigns. So, um, I mean, the first business to business is me pretty much just going door to door for businesses, right? So I'm pitching employees, I'm pitching customer, I'm pitching everyone inside those doors. Um, when I was running campaigns like that, I was I was talking to several hundred people per day. But then if I did event based campaigns, which, you know, I ran at Canadian Tires, um, I, I, I was approved in select Costco clubs across uh, Ontario. Days like that, I'm talking to thousands of people face to face. So, um, you know, for anyone who's done sales, uh, direct sales face to face like that, um, you know, you get the tons of no's, but then part of the part, part of those no's are the, you know, FU's and the F offs and go get a real job. Right. So through all of that, you kind of build thick skin. Um, and then you also kind of, you learn how to, how to talk properly. And, you know, like I said, starting this off speaking is a skill. And I think it's just something I kind of, you know, developed as a result of all that experience. So yeah, well, it's clear. And yeah, even just me getting a, a couple jobs in retail and customer service, that really helped me come out of my shell as someone who's very shy and introverted. Uh, you're thrown right into the fire and you start talking to people and then you learn how to uh, just navigate those conversations, how to receive those harsh comments every once in a while. And that's and, exactly uh, that, yeah. Yeah, and it's very encouraging when somebody actually buys something from you or uh, enjoys your conversation. So yeah, that's and actually, you know, it's funny because you just reminded me of something. Because I said I started my career in the sales industry. I mean, I mean, I dropped out of university to start my first business, which was sales. But technically, the first job I ever had was as a bartender. Um, wow. I did that for like two and a half months in a summer uh, as a summer job, and I was oh god, how old was I? Seventeen or eighteen at the time. So I wasn't even old enough to drink, right? You're right. And um, that that job really, really taught me a lot about communication as well, though, because it wasn't a bartending position at a bar. I was a bartender at a, um, it was like a higher end wedding hall. Mm. So um, I, I was talking to all walks of life. And it wasn't just, you know, your uh, your normals that come into the bar every, every night sort of thing. So um I developed a lot of communication through that job as well. Just kind of, just trying to have as much fun as I can with people behind the bar. Um, then I kind of transitioned into sales and, and yeah, I mean, the more people you talk to, the more comfortable you'll get. But I think at the same time, if you make it fun for yourself, um, it becomes easier to learn as well. So I'm somebody where, um, and, and I'm not sure if you noticed it in the fun fact series, but I try to joke around as much as I can um, and especially face to face. Um, a large part of the sales that I would make is is people buying into me, not the product. So I, I would always try and crack a joke or make them laugh in some sort of way. Um, and, and, you know, it even gets to the point where I forget to pitch them the product sometimes. And they would have to ask me, you know, what are you pitching? What, what are you selling? Right. Um, and, and yeah, so 
I'm um, just having fun with it. And yeah. That's a, that's such a good point, man. We could have a whole conversation on, on business. I would love to do that someday, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's such a good point is that, uh, is, is kind of, I hate the word selling yourself, but you are getting them to buy into you and not, not necessarily the product. And once they like you, they'll, they'll buy almost anything from you. So man, that's a, that's really nice insight. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's exactly that. And then just re kind of regarding your content. I mean, I, this is my personal opinion. I was very impressed by what Corey did with Vivian three. And I would say that you have the most polished content since him, like in terms of just the whole package. Right. And he ended up getting hired by VV. And I personally think a similar thing can happen to you. And you've mentioned in your videos that people have said that to you. If VV did hire you, what position and role would suit you best? Graphic design. That's an easy one for me. Um, it, it, I mentioned it in my videos in the past, actually. VV hiring me would be an absolute dream. Um, well, being able to be part of that team would be, I, I mean, God, I, I can't even begin to imagine. But if I'm honest as well, I, I, I don't really have a tech background. So gra graphic design would be probably the best angle for me to fit in on the team. Um, yeah, like that type of stuff. But um, yes. in terms of, you know, my knowledge behind cryptocurrency and all that, I don't want to sit here and try and pretend like I know all that stuff. I, I really don't. Um, I, I'm kind of learning as as uh, as others are in the community. But um, from, from a graphic design standpoint, content creation standpoint, um, marketing standpoint, promotional banners, that type of stuff. I, I'd be very interested in that. Yeah. I mean, and I feel like you would be good at a numerous different things. So, I mean, kind of a Swiss army knife, but definitely your graphic design, as I just showed is, is off the charts, man. I was so enamored with these. I was like, man, that's so cool. And I've, I've tried to do similar things messing around on Photoshop and I'm like, no, he's, he's clearly on another level and the, <laughs> the lighting and stuff, the shadows. I mean, there's a lot that goes into stuff like this that I don't think people realize. So, so you want to know something funny about that? Actually, I, um, I touched Photoshop for the first time making those pieces. Really? Yeah. Wow. So I don't know if you know my Crypticans piece with the VV logo in the middle. Um, it's not, uh, it's not one of those four, but, um, mm -hmm. I can send it to you if you want. Yeah. That photo was the first one I ever put together. And I did that in maybe two and a half days. Um, mm -hmm. But the way I kind of teach myself that stuff is is just compartmentalizing it. So, you know, like I said, I never touched the platform before. But what I did was I had an idea of what I wanted to do, which was these images. Um, and I pretty much just started off by saying, OK, I went onto YouTube. How do you cut out an image? Right. Did that cut out all the characters. Then went back to YouTube. How do you add highlights? Added all the highlights. Then how do you uh, how do you add shadows, right? And then I started. I, I just added bit by bit. And then what you notice is you do one photo, then you do another photo, and you just rinse and repeat the exact same cycles that you just did. And then when you get to the fourth or the fifth one, you know how to do it all, right? So I'm not. I'm. I've never been somebody to kind of sit down and watch a four, five, six hour video trying to teach you the whole platform. Right. I, I, you just don't end up remembering anything. Yeah. I start with an idea and then I break it down bit by bit. And then I find that the steps that I take to create the end result end up translating into other projects as well. Does that make sense? Yep. It makes perfect sense, especially. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I was going to say that that's so wise because yeah, that I think a lot of times people do get overwhelmed because they try to do everything at once and following a step-by-step -step process and i'm seeing those themes in i can tell that's how your brain works because that's how your videos are structured too a lot of times mm -hmm. is you know breaking things down step by step having a, a slide of this and a slide of that where you can digest it instead of just information overload in a free flow and then people are kind of just thrown into the waves right so yeah, <laughs> yeah that that's all it, it's very evident in your work so that's, thank you i really appreciate that yeah, absolutely, man. And so uh, thank you. I appreciate you sharing, you know, how how you go about something like that, because I know there are aspiring uh, graphic designers. There's people who are very creative in this community and they're going to they're inspired by stuff like this to do their own stuff. And so that that I think provides them a lot of help. And I would say the same thing for aspiring content creators, people who want to make videos and mm -hmm. 
are probably very inspired by a lot of the content creators in this community. And you've shared your process of, of how you do graphic design, but what about your videos? Like what's your process for producing a video? How long does it typically take you? And, and just any tips that you would have for somebody who's trying to make videos? Sure. So, um, my initial idea with the channel was to kind of create a, a template for my videos, right? So I have my introduction. I use the exact same line that I do every single video, um, same closing line. Um, that goes into my intro animation. And then I, I pretty much just dive right into the video from there. Um, you know, I, I wanted that short intro because people's attention span is just too short nowadays. It's like really, really bad. And it's just getting worse with TikTok and all that. Um, so a very, very short introduction that just sums up the, the, you know, what you're talking about in the video and then right into the video. Um, another thing that I really try to focus on is things that are actually moving on the screen. Cause like you said, I, I, I don't show my face. So I want to make sure that there's things that are moving to keep the engagement, um, or sorry, not engagement, attention, I guess. Attention. Um, but you know, that's why I got the intro animations. I got the transitions. I got the, you know, the moving backgrounds, that type of stuff. Um, even the music is another way of, of helping with all that. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of creating a video, I need, right now it's taking anywhere from, oh gosh, uh, probably from six to 10 hours. Mm -hmm. um, and that's creating the graphics to, you know, filming, cutting, editing, um, and then rendering the video. Um, but yeah, I, 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 my main focus for the channel is just having that template, right? So that when I post on Tuesdays and Thursdays, right? Even if, you know, new week rolls around, you know, we hit a Monday and somebody goes, ah, oh, you know, VV Investments isn't posting today, right? Then Tuesday rolls around, they're like, yes, he's posting a video today, right? Mm -hmm. You kind of get into that, um, that routine. And I was, when I started the channel, I was thinking of, you know, back in the day when I would watch TV and you'd go to the channel where it shows you all of the, the, uh, the stations that are playing by the mm -hmm. 30 minute intervals, right? Yep. You might have the odd station where it's playing the marathon for the full day. Um, but that was my intention behind that, right? Where people know exactly when I'm going to be posting, not time-wise, but, you know, day of the week. Um, and, you know, using the same words in the intros and the outros is another way of people clicking on, on that video and mouthing the words with me, right? Yeah. Um, and, and getting them involved with the video. So, um, yeah, hopefully that answered your question. I know it's kind of all over the place a little bit there, but. No, dude, that, that's all great. I mean, that's all just a kind of a behind the curtain type of look at, at how you go about your thing. And I, I have a really bad ADHD. So if I ramble, just shut me up. <laughs> no. <laughs> no worries, man. You're here to talk. So I appreciate it. But yeah, that it's it's super cool to, to hear your process. And again, six to 10 hours. I mean, that's that's dedication right there. And uh, so for for anybody who is looking to get into this, yeah, it, it is a commitment. And that's something that I found my it was mine was just more of me talking in front of a camera. But the planning process, what are you going to say? Um, how are you going to package the information? And I'm, I, I didn't hear you mention that, but I know that goes into it, too. Um, making all of those slides for that information that, that, that's populated with actual thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that takes a lot of time in, in, fact, in terms of sorry to cut you off. In, no, no, in terms of, you know, coming up with the content, um, a lot of that I do before I even start creating the video. So, mm -hmm. for example, like I, I have a list on my phone right now of um, uh, a Word document that maybe has 20 to 30 different types of video ideas. Um, so when it comes, you know, to me just making a new video, I just go right to that list, right? And then if I come up with a new idea or three or four or 10 that week, I still put them in the list, Right. Um, it's something similar to what I do with my social media clients where, you know, the content that I post for them, they just put into a Google drive and they just constantly add to that Google drive every single week. So I don't have to harp them for social media content. It's the same thing with me where, you know, I might have 10, 10 ideas in a week, but I only post two videos. Well, that's only gonna, what I'm doing now is I'm creating a backlog of content. So even if I have a week where I'm not really thinking of many ideas, I still have a ton written down, if that makes sense. Oh, it, it's super wise. You, that future proofs your, your channel. You've always got 
ideas you have a you can schedule it right and you've even shared that in your videos of you know these are the videos coming next and mm -hmm. and and always harvesting for for more ideas especially creative guys you, you know ideas flow and you write them down it, it that list can never be too long it's it's always a good idea to have more ideas than less right yeah and, and you know what actually one thing to add to that because i know evolve collects actually put out a tweet last week talking about how he's kind of getting a little burned out and he wanted some advice mm -hmm. um I, I think a big thing that i always try to remind myself too because there are weeks where i want to post more than two videos but i i got to remind myself i say look it takes me a, you know this amount of time to make a video if i commit another eight to 12 hours or whatever this week to make a third video, then am I going to be burned out for my two videos next week? Right? So that's also part of the reason why I scheduled two videos per week on those two days is because I wanted to make sure that I paced myself. I didn't burn myself out. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, it's really good to have that plan and that self-awareness, right. To, to, to think about, you know, your future self, I don't want to be robbing from next week just to, to do something I feel like doing this week. I think that that's really wise. And speaking of your plan, I mean, you're kind of taking this to the next level. Now you've just recently in, in your, uh, one of your last videos, right. You revealed how you're going to be, or you already have opened up a store. I'm trying mm -hmm. to get that video pulled up right here. My first step to do graphic design and content creation full time here. And, uh, here it is. So this is, this is what you've revealed in, in terms of your, your store here. And I'm really looking forward to collecting all of these. And you also introduced the GCU, which is the, the global comic universe, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So for anybody that hasn't seen that video yet, um, I'm going to link it in the description below. I just obviously showed it on screen. But is there anything else that you want to share or elaborate on about the vision for your channel for your store for your brand? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I think the biggest thing for me is you know, wanting to provide unique content from the beginning with my channel, the, the store that I just launched is kind of, it's an extension of that. It's a way to kind of complement the unique content. Um, I said in that video, you just promoted, I, I don't want to be just, you know, taking a white t-shirt and slapping my logo on it and charging 50 bucks for it. Um, you know, when, when YouTube first started, that was the first way that YouTubers found out how to monetize their audience was by providing merchandise. Right. And, you know, you, fa you fast forward to today, I don't want to just follow the same path that people have been following since day one. Um, so my, my idea behind the store is to provide really unique offerings. So the first one you see there is that is that coloring book. My idea behind that was, you know, David was talking about how they wanted to make VV a platform for kids and, and you know, parents to be able to spend time together. Well, I, I noticed that one, we have a lot of comic book fans in the community, but two, also a lot of people with young kids. So that coloring book is a great way now where you can spend time with your kids, but also doing something that you enjoy, right? Um, in, in terms of the comic covers, um, the GCU is kind of just my way of being a little bit creative with it. But, you know, again, a lot of comic fans in the community. Um, I posted just a little one that I put together a few weeks prior, and it, it seemed to get quite a bit of interest and people liked it. And, you know, I said, Vivi is a very global and we have people from all over the world, you know, small, smallest country, we have people like Yemen, Hawaii, uh, South Macedonia, like the craziest places, right? Yeah. So the GCU is kind of a way of bringing all those countries together. So over time, my intention with it is to release more countries, more superheroes, um, and then any superhero you end up picking up, you get the sidekick with it. Um, and the sidekick is the, the one at the top of the, uh, the website there, but it's... Um, the beer baron yeah so that the whole idea of the sidekicks is you know to provide a little bit more of a, a humorous approach to things so i don't promote them on the website other than that one just to give you a little bit of a you know a teaser but um you know each comic cover will come with some sort of whimsical sidekick um and in that case that's the german one you got the beer baron so strong as a keg bold as a stein always ready to save the line so that's the that's the idea behind that but yeah it's um fun little project and i think it's just a way for me to kind of get involved with my audience and and another thing that people can kind of bring into the bb verse right um yeah, yeah. yeah i really i really hope to see down the line me just walk into somebody's bb home and you know you see a line of you know 10 or 15 of them uh on the wall i think that'd be super cool as well so oh they'll be on my wall it's super cool man and i love that 
this community is amazing in terms of we're so diverse there's content creators and what i mean by content is actually making stuff like this there's artists and i'm really looking forward to having a lot of the different community members art on my walls as well that's going to be super unique and great exposure for them and a way to support each other it's super cool and since you did bring up the vv verse uh, how do you envision yourself using the vv verse 